So hi dear friends and students, welcome to this GeoEntire YouTube channel that is all about the earth. So today this is again time to share one more lesson with you. In this lesson we are going to discuss what is quaternary stratigraphy and what are the different aspects which are very very important to study the quaternary stratigraphy. We already familiar with what is lithostratigraphy the in which the rock strata is very very important. Second, we have already discussed that is the biostratigraphy in which fossil content is, it is very very important. But in quaternary stratigraphy, the chronostratigraphy it is very very important. Chronostratigraphy it is nothing but the branch of what we can say that stratigraphy. The second aspects we are going to cover in this lesson that is the climatostratigraphy. So these two types of stratigraphy we are going to discuss in this particular lesson. So let's we start the lesson. So stratigraphy is nothing but the study of rocks in their chronological order and their correlation in different localities. So that is nothing but the stratigraphy. Stratigraphic units are based on number of different aspects. For example, lethal stratigraphy units are based on or distinguished on the basis of lithologic composition of the beds. Whereas biostratigraphy units are based on fossil content in particular sediments. So that is nothing but the stratigraphy. So chronostratigraphy, it is branch of stratigraphy based on the concept of time where rock bodies or rock strata representing the intervals of geologic time are given formal names and grouped under a standard hierarchical order. The hierarchy of formal chronostatigraphy units are system, series, stage and substage corresponding to the geological time units such as era, period, epoch and age respectively. So quaternary is a chronostatigraphic term and it designates or shows a period within a Cenozoic era. It is again subdivided into Pleistocene and Holocene epochs. That part we are already seen. So now Second aspect which is related to the climatostratigraphy. So climatostratigraphy is depend on the climatic criteria. So climatic criteria is used in building up stratigraphy. The chronology of the Pleistocene was originally developed through the observation and study of the successions containing glacial telites deposits. Both in Europe and the United States where the soils that develop under warm climatic conditions are sandwiched between glacial deposits. So this provided the basis for the development of the idea of multiple glaciations during the Pleistocene period. So to form these studies a chronology was developed and that suggests that the Pleistocene consists of four or five major glacial stages which were separated by interglacial stages with climates generally similar to the those of present days. So therefore, a climatostratigraphy of quaternary was established. The terminology used for glacial and interglacial period in Europe and in Australia or in North America is different than the other uh, countries. So since the beginning of 1950s, a much better chronology of Pleistocene climatic events has evolved by means of analysis of oxygen isotope records. So the marine isotopic records are continuous whereas terrestrial records which contain gaps because of erosion or lack of sedimentation, soil formation are a combination of these two factors. Okay, So consequently marine oxygen isotope records are correlated Glacial and interglacial stages are now commonly referred by their isotopic stages. So unfortunately most terrestrial records contain few radiometric ages and are incomplete and specific correlations. So except for the most recent part of the record, here are some difficulty to work out with the certainty. A few terrestrial records however are exceptional and can be correlated with confidence. So the terrestrial marine sequence of quaternary is best exposed in the southern part of the Italy. It is a type of area in which Pleistocene is subdivided into five stages. 
such as Calabrian, Emilian, Sicilian, Milesian, and Tyrrhenian. Here, the continental, that is the non-marine sequence of Pliocene Pleistocene, is known as Filari Francian stage. So, the lower Filariferian stage is the Pliocene, whereas the middle and upper Filariferian are the early Pleistocene. So, Pleistocene epoch is subdivided into informal time units, the early, middle, and late Pleistocene. Its formal subdivisions are lower, middle, and upper Pleistocene. The lower Pleistocene covers the time span that is 1800 kilo years BP, that is the before present. So, to about 780 kilo years before the present and includes Calabrian stage and Emilian stage. The middle Pleistocene covers the period about 780 kilo years BP to 125 kilo years BP. BP means before present and includes Sicilian, Milesian and part of Tyrrhenian stages. The upper Pleistocene is the one of the shortest duration that is the 125 kilo years to CA. CA means approximately to 10 kilo years BP before present. So this is nothing but the Pleistocene of the shortest duration. So the lower boundary between the lower and middle Pleistocene coincides with that of the one between the branches normal epoch and the Matumana reverse epoch. The age of the beach 780 kilo years per orbital chronology. So the middle Pleistocene extends to the end of the next glaciation at about 125 kilo years. For example, oxygen isotope stage 5e. So the upper Pleistocene includes the last interglacial glacial cycle ending at its boundary with Holocene about 10 kilo years ago. So now last part that is the Holocene. Holocene is a informally subdivided into early Holocene that is the 10 ky that is the 10,000 years to 6,000 years before the present. The middle Holocene that is 6,000 years to 4,000 years before the present and late Holocene. The age of this late Holocene is near about 4,000 years before the present to the up to the present. So this is regarding the Holocene period. So this Holocene it is also called as recent period. Dear friends, we have discussed in this lesson what is stratigraphy? What are the different units, particularly climatostratigraphy and chronostratigraphy? So, which are the important things in the chronostratigraphy and which are the important things in the study of climatostratigraphy? So, I hope this video or this lesson, I hope this lesson is useful to you. If you like my lesson, if you like my video, then share and subscribe my YouTube channel that is Jew and Tyrol about the earth. Thank you.